things. Now let's try it in a little bit more realistic manner. The selector is what you want to format on the page. The first thing I want to format on my page is going to be the headline. So most of our selectors, especially early on, are going to be called type selectors, which is simply a version of the tag you want to manipulate. My web page has a headline 1 element or headline 1 tag. Well, my selector is going to be H1. Curly braces. The first property I'm going to mess around with is color. And I'm going to make that headline blue. The other property I want to mess around with is font style. And I'm going to make that italics. Notice that my property and my value are separated by a colon and at the end of each declaration there's a semicolon and let's see what else can I do how about um, border bottom border hyphen bottom is the property and I'm gonna have several values two pixels thick solid border and red there my headline one selector is being manipulated the color is going to be blue, the font style is going to be italics, and there's going to be a bottom border that's two pixels thick, solid, and red. Now I'm going to save this, jump back to my browser, and refresh. There, H1s. I have two H1 elements on my page. Both of them have the, the same style now. Blue, italics, red bottom border. Now, I would like my second headline one to be a little bit different because it's going to be a subtitle. Notice I'm using a class attribute. So instead of using a type selector, I'll use what I'll call a dot selector. So, if there's a class, and by the way, subtitle, I just made that up. Class is an official HTML attribute. Subtitle describes what you want it to be. I want to make a subtitle and this is how I refer to a class attribute that's in my web page. I want the color to be gray. I want the font size to be 10 points. Border bottom 0px. Now what I'm doing here is I'm counteracting. My subtitle is a, is a headline 1. In fact, let me do this first. I'm going to take this last declaration out. I'm just going to have it gray and 10 points. There we go. So my subtitle is gray and 10 points in font size. But notice it's still italicized and it still has a red bottom border. Because my subtitle is also a headline 1, it's taking on behaviors of my H1 rule. So it, ha it is blue, italics, and with a bottom border. Now I did change the color to gray. So the gray color of my subtitle is overriding the blue color of the H1. Well, if I don't want a border on my subtitle, then I'll override the H1 border. And just give it zero pixels. There we go, the border is gone. Now the font is a little bit small, so I'll make that a 14 point font and I'm also going to do this margin top negative 10 px 10 pixels text align right there we go so my subtitle is now gray, italics, no border, aligned to the right of the page, and it's a little bit closer to the red line. In fact, if I make this a negative 14 pixels, I can get it even closer. So I have a headline 1, and then I have a headline 1 subtitle. Now I'm going to manipulate my paragraphs a little bit. Since I want to manipulate my paragraphs, I'll use P as my type selector. There, my paragraphs are now using the Verdana font, and they are indented. The first line of each paragraph is indented. They're indented 
a distance of two m's. An m is the width of a capital letter M. This will come up a little bit more often in more advanced CSS work when we want to do um, flexible width layouts for web pages. So pixels is a unit of measurement and m's are also unit of measurement. My two properties here, notice I did separate these by a comma, um, the two properties here, sorry, the two values for my property, I'm telling the browser that I want to use the Verdana font. But if the Verdana font is not being is not available, then I want to use the Arial font, which is even more common. This is you're just going to have to kind of rec remember this one. In this particular situation, you separate the in the font family property, you separate the values, the property values with a comma if you're going to use multiples. It wasn't necessary for me to use multiples. But in my bottom border property in this situation up here, you don't use commas. And there's a reason for it, and we'll get into this more later on. It'll make more sense as we move through. But right now I'm formatting several things. And let me go ahead and format something else on my page, the body of the page. I'll make the background color of my page yellow, and I will put a border on my page that's 10 pixels, solid, and green. There. So my page now has a green border, and the background of the page is yellow. Notice in this Firefox browser, my border is only going around the distance of my page that I've used where the text is. I would like to get the green border right up next to the edge so I'm also going to get rid of the default margin on the body of a page by setting it to 0px. There, now the green border goes all the way out. If I don't like how close my text is, I'll put in some padding. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time on margin and padding right now because we will spend a lot of time on margin and padding as we get to CSS box properties. But this is my page formatted with some style sheets. I'm formatting my basic headline one, my subtitle, my paragraphs, and the body of my page. I'm using CSS rules. Each rule is made up of multiple declarations. A declaration is made up of of a property and one or more values depending on the property.